My name is Scott, and I suffer from REM sleep behavior disorder. That, that's what the doctors tell me, anyway, because basically I act out my dreams during the REM cycle of sleep, which... If I'm having a lucid dream, means everything I experienced feels much more real. That That's my problem. I don't think it's just some disorder anymore. When I was younger, probably about 12 years old or so... My parents thought it was just me sleepwalking. We moved around a lot because of my dad's work as a construction manager. I guess they figured it was the stress of moving so often that caused it. But when we finally settled down and it didn't go away, my parents decided to seek professional help. So I never saw a problem with it personally. Never really felt like I was sleeping. It was more like, more like a meditation state. I was aware of my surroundings, but everything just felt a little off. I'd see things that other people couldn't. Fantastical, terrifying creatures that loomed in the dark. But despite my reassurance that there was nothing wrong, I still had to see a somnologist. The building looked brand new. It was small and looked to be freshly painted white. It had a welcoming atmosphere as we walked in with a receptionist desk at our left. Hello, how are you today? She asked when she noticed us. My dad responded, Doing well. We're here to see Dr. Castian for my son here. He patted me on the shoulder. They filled out some paperwork for me, and shortly after, I was called back to see them. Welcome, Scott. My name's Dr. Castian. I'm glad to see that you're looking well-rested, Dr. Castian said as I walked into his office. Hey, uh, my name's Scott. I was never great with social interaction. I mean, uh, hello, Dr. Castian. Nice to meet you. He let out a short chuckle. It's all right. Please, have a seat. He gestured to a chair, sitting across from his desk. Now, I'd like to ask you a few questions before we get started. I already talked to your parents, but I'd like to get your version of everything as well. Before I prescribe you any medication, you know, that is. He had that wise old man feel about him, but only looked to be about in his mid-thirties or so. When did this all start? He asked when I finally sat down. About two, maybe two and a half years ago, I think. We finally settled down, and my parents figured it was just sleepwalking or something, I said with a hint of nervousness. Have you noticed a lessening of symptoms since you had settled down? Any new symptoms, perhaps? He asked inquisitively. Uh, no, not really. I mean, it just all feels real in the moment. I see things that don't quite make sense. I didn't hear about this from your parents, but it isn't uncommon. In the case that you are having a lucid dream, added movements of this potential condition could make your dreams feel that much more real. But you find yourself questioning reality? He was taking this conversation in a weird direction, but he was a doctor. Well, the dreams do feel real. Almost like I'm meditating, but with my eyes open. He wrote something down on a notepad. What type of things do you see? He seemed to be very interested. Ghosts? Um, creatures that I can't find anywhere online. Impossible entities I can't describe. He jotted something else down. Well, from what I'm gathering from you and your parents, I believe this should be a rather simple fix. I'm going to prescribe you some melatonin at a strength of 10 milligrams. It's typically only meant for adults. But based on the severity of your case, I believe it'll do you well. You won't be harmed. Talk to your parents if symptoms worsen or if nothing changes. Have a great day, Scott. He wrote something down on a sheet of paper and called my parents in as I walked out the door. The medicine only really seemed to affect my movement. I wouldn't sleepwalk anymore, however, that just meant the things I was seeing would come closer to me. They never touched me or anything, so I figured there it was, the best solution. But that was, of course, until recently. I never stopped seeing those things. And in fact, as I grew older, I could see more of them. They also drew closer every night. It wasn't significant enough to notice at first, but eventually, they began touching my arms, my legs, and my sleep. The feeling of their hands was surreal, like something that was never meant to be felt, as the cosmos itself turned into a living organism. Since it started, I had been waking up more exhausted. I felt there had to be a correlation, so I did the only thing I could think of. I decided to go see a somnologist. It wasn't the same one, but I had been seeing this one for the past few years. 
The building was a bit larger than the one I went to as a child. It was painted brown, had a much more open lounge room with comfortable brown leather chairs. Scott, I heard the receptionist say, you're back earlier than expected. I hope everything's going well. I think she noticed my bags, but didn't want to say anything. Yeah, I feel like a million bucks, I responded drowsily. Is Dr. Kent ready to see me? Yeah. You know where to go, she said before going back to something on her computer. Hey, uh, it's, it's me. I try to sound as cheerful as possible to mask the exhaustion. Scott, please take a seat. He generously had a cheerful expression, but he sounded a bit more serious today. So you've been having trouble sleeping? He gestured to my face, which I took as him pointing out the bags. Y yeah, um... Um, well, I'm not quite sure how to describe what's been going on. So generally, my sleep is like sleep paralysis. You know, you know how it goes. But lately, the figures have been touching my arms and legs. You know, sometimes rubbing just over my heart as well. I, I know it's just a dream, but the feeling is so real. Please elaborate. He sounded more serious. I couldn't tell if he thought I was crazy or if he was just trying to figure out what was happening. Well, um, maybe not real so much as does unreal. Like, like the feeling feels real, but the sensation is indescribable. Also, I pulled up my long sleeve shirt. In my dream, one of them scraped a fingernail up my forearm. But I can see it. I got closer to show him. Have you gotten any animals as of late? He asked. And no, um, just my goldfish. There was a pause. Doc, I'm not saying that I think they're real, but is there any reason this could happen? I mean, maybe a reaction to the meds? Anything? No. Not a reaction to the meds, though. It may be that you're building a tolerance to them so you're not able to move in your sleep again, then your brain's coming up with reasons for the sensations that you're feeling in your sleep. Uh, I can up your dosage, if you believe that'll help, but you're already pushing it with how much you're currently taking. Sure. It, it might, I guess. I wasn't entirely sure of my response, but you know, I had to try something. As night approached and I got ready for bed, I took what he had ended up recommending, which was basically just under what caused me permanent damage. As I slept, I saw them again. They were more than I had ever seen, all poking and prodding at me. At one point, one of the things that appeared to be an old woman grabbed my arm and began moving my fingers like she was inspecting them. The whole night my adrenaline was pumping. I felt exhausted. My anxiety peaked when one of them, that I can't describe, stuck their head into my arm, and I lost all feeling in it until I woke up. I was drained. Physically, as well as something else I can't quite explain. Spiritually? I decided to do some research to see if anyone else had any similar experiences. Considering my arm was still a little numb, I wanted to get any and all answers I could. It eventually led to some forums about paranormal experiences, someone's retelling of their recurring sleep paralysis episodes that eventually started affecting them in real life had a lot of attention. Things like scratches that they couldn't have caused on their own, as well as some unexplainable bruises. Some people were talking about their personal experiences. One in particular caught my eye. Yeah, I have similar experiences. My doctor prescribed me some medication, but it just made them worse. The comment was a few months old, but I decided to try and get in contact with them. I first tried just replying to their comment, but after a few hours I decided I should take more direct measures. I found their email through some questionable means and sent them one. It mostly was just a few questions about if they had found a way to deal with the dreams, if they had found a solution through therapy or anything like that. It was about eight hours later or so, just as I was getting ready for bed when I found a response. But it wasn't one I was expecting. Someone had responded to my comment. Hey, just thought you might want to know. I did some digging, and apparently this guy was sent to a mental institution recently. 
A few days ago, he was found dead. They labeled it as a heart attack in his sleep. Hope you figure out whatever you need to, my guy. That was it. Just some stranger telling me the guy died. It, sure, it was sad, but it wasn't helpful at all. That, that's what I thought at first, anyway, but the longer I dwelled on it, the more everything made sense to me. He was on medication for some sort of sleep disorder because of whatever he saw in his sleep. He was eventually sent to a mental institution, and then, then he died in his sleep of a heart attack. Whatever the guy had, it must have been similar to what I've got. I mean, the scratches, the bruises, weird visions in his sleep. I began to worry that I may have something similar happen to me. I responded to the stranger. Hey, do you know anyone I might be able to talk to? What he's talking about feels awfully familiar, and I, I could use some help. Unfortunately, they never responded. So instead of taking my usual medications, I decided to do something I hadn't since I was a child. The, rather, I decided to not do something. I didn't take my medication. It took a little while to fall asleep, but eventually, it came to me. The things were much more handsy. They were, they were holding my entire body down while others gathered around. I couldn't move no matter what I tried. The sensation of their hands going into different limbs prevented any movement whatsoever. It was, it was an agonizingly long dream. Though I don't know if that's what I would call it. See, all their poking and prodding from that night was easily visible in the morning. There were even a few bloodstains I noticed as I stumbled out of the bed. The numbness was it's unrelenting. So, I called in sick for work. I had to get everything situated. I, I couldn't go to sleep if I wanted to keep whatever was happening from happening. I continued to do some research and found a few pages that claimed things like keeping a crystal beside you as you slept. Typically some form of quartz or, or burning sage in the house would keep spirits away. And Well, I'm not certain that's what they were. I, I wanted to see if I could potentially do anything that could stop these things from touching me. So I went to a pawn shop that I knew I had seen some quartz at and I, I bought some. And next I went to a gardening shop. I picked up sage, a, a big bundle of it. Of course, I'd also picked up some salt from another store. I mean, it might have just been a bunch of hogwash, right? But I wanted to take every possible precaution, so I had to pick up salt. That night, I was ready. I had a necklace with a cross, a piece of quartz to hold in my hand as I slept. I burned an entire bundle of sage, and I left a little, a little burning in an ashtray next to my bed. Then I had made an entire salt circle where I could around my bed. So I, I thought I was prepared. That, that nothing could ever get near me, that they wouldn't be able to touch me again. That's what I thought, but... Why was I wrong? For the first few hours or so, they did actually keep their distance. I was able to sit up on account of the fact that I had not taken any of my meds in the past two days. But I didn't dare move out of the salt circles. I couldn't actually tell what was holding them back. But if it was the salt... I didn't want to take any chances, so I just sat there, turning my head to look at all the figures standing around me. By my count, it was probably around 15, but I couldn't be certain. They were all just standing just out of the reach of my bed. That was until one of them that I could feel the power of began walking to the front of the group. Somehow I could tell it was stronger than the rest, and as if I could subconsciously sense its aura and my brain was telling me to run away. A barrier, a weak barrier like this cannot hold me back. It was the first time I had heard one of them speak. Its voice was deep and gravelly with no noticeable accent, like a war vet who had seen their fair share of death and smoked a pack a day to deal with it. If you simply give your body to me, everything will be over with. You'll not have to deal with any more of us. Just then it grabbed my heart. The pain was immeasurable, like talons stabbing straight into my heart. One. Two. Three. My heart was still beating, but much slower than normal. 
Just give in. And your body will not have to die, boy. It sounded nervous, like it wasn't sure if what it was doing was right. One. Two. Three. Still beating. Why? It was all I could manage to get out. The reasoning is beyond you, boy. Now give it up! He screamed that last part in desperation. I suddenly remembered the crystal I had been holding onto in my hand, and I stabbed the thing in the arm with it. What happened appeared to be the crystal absorbing some of the energy from the thing's arm. It jolted its arm back and suddenly dissipated into nothing, and without saying a word, the other things followed its lead, leaving me in a blank room, something I hadn't seen in my dreams in so long. When I awoke, I had a slight pain where my heart was, but aside from some mild irritation, it appeared to be fine. I scheduled an appointment for an MRI, and I went to work. Everything was fine. I, I rarely see any creatures in my dreams anymore. But from time to time, sometimes in my dreams, sometimes in day-to-day -day life, I occasionally catch a glimpse of that thing out of the corner of my eye. But no matter how much I try to focus on it, I can never get a good look. Hey there, kids. It's me. Mr. Creepypasta, I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to tonight's story or watching tonight's video. And if you guys would like to see more or hear more, then I'd appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. Or if you're listening on the podcast, then click the follow button. We're moving into spring, which means that uh, it's getting warmer some places. And also, that means that it's probably good for you guys to get a nice tall glass of iced tea. And if you've been here before, then you know that my wife sells things like tea. So yeah, check out Ivory Monocle Tea. It's etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to all you guys who support on Patreon, patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, especially Jacob Schaefer, Jay, Zach, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Landa Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Kraus, Katrina Beasel, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Miss Exandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Frickin, Azarine Fox, Robert White, Andreas Garza, Snails Burnin, Legit Quad Feed, Fried Chicken 12, James Bruce, Chris Lovin, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, Justin Johnson, 1 800 Nightmare, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Jason Wilson, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Plater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Arse, Cryptic Nightmares, Brennan Wright, Someone You Love, S-Man, Kiwi the Sloth, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Talon Karlick, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and if you guys would like to join them on the list of people's names I mispronounce, you can always do so at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, as well as all those fine people in the description down below who help support this channel and keep the lights on and give treats to Hylas and Hercules. You guys, as always, are the real MVPs, and I love and appreciate every single one of you who support there or just support anywhere by watching and subbing. So good night, everybody and sweet dreams.